Hey everyone, welcome back. So this is going to be uh, kind of a continuation from the previous video and I just wanted to demonstrate how to get some more functionality out of this contact listener. It wasn't very apparent, I felt, um, from the previous video what you could actually achieve uh, with the interaction between two bodies making contact with each other because all we had was a simple system dot 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 print line and that's not necessarily a fun thing to just do um, especially for a game and your player or your user won't be able to see that kind of stuff so um, I'm just going to demonstrate a simple kind of sensor switch object that will be uh, kind of tied so to speak, to another body, and uh, when the sensor is touched by the player, uh, the body that that sensor is attached to will be influenced in some way um, by utilizing our contact listener. So first thing I'm going to do is add a new entity. I'm going to call that tutorial sensor, and I'm uh, just going to erase this right here. And all I'm going to do, again, I don't recommend this, but you can do it if you want. Um, just doesn't really get that practice in for you um, by typing it out, building that muscle memory. Uh, but I'm just going to copy and paste. So um, I'm creating this new class called Tutorial Sensor, and I'm going to create a new body that it's going to keep a reference to. We're going to remove, uh, you know what, I'm actually going to save that and just rename it. The trigger body um, is going to get the linear damping, and it's also going to get some angular damping. And we'll just set that to 5. Um, bear with me here for a second. It's going to be a little bit of boilerplate. Um, equals bodybuilder.createboxworld uh, x, y plus 30. Um, 20, 20, false, false, okay. And if you don't know what this method is real quick, I'll uh, jump over here so you can kind of get a feel for what it does. So there's this one, which is create box, um, which I actually don't want it to set the user data in there. And I should get rid of these uh, mask bits stuff, huh? Okay, uh, anyway, yeah, so this is what this method does. Um, nothing too special, just creates a general box 2D body, uh, kind of like how we're doing down here. And then I'm also still creating the body we had in the tutorial box. However, I'm going to do something different. Um, I'm going to set a certain variable in the fixture definition, and that's called is sensor. We're going to set that to true. Uh, by default, set to false, but when you set it to true, it's as if... Um, the object is, uh, it, it doesn't collide with any object anymore once you set it as a sensor. Um, sensors are passed through objects and they're used for this exact kind of scenario that I'm about to show you here. Um, so I'm setting it to is sensor and you know what, I'm going to also set it to a static body um, since we don't really want our sensor to be moving at this current point. Um, and I'm going to leave the hit method the same just uh, to start, um, but for the most part those are really the only changes just to make sure uh, fixture depth is sensor is set right there um, and I also changed it to a static body just so you can kind of see what I changed and then going back to our contact state um, we're going to have private tutorial sensor we'll just call that sensor for the time being, and then sensor equals new tutorial sensor world sensor, and we'll just set this to 100 and 0, so that'll go to the right of us. Um, all right, uh, so with that, let's go back into our contact listener just real quick so you can see what we have here from last time. Um, if you remember these explicit casting calls, uh, to be able to start calling that hit method, which is in tutorial box, you'll notice down here, it calls the hit method. Um, but beyond that, we haven't really done anything else. There's that check. Um, but let's run it real quick, see what we get. 
Okay, so now you'll notice that I have uh, the object one, object two, player, um, which I can still move around and stuff, and then I have this green box, which is uh, known to be a static body, and this uh, another pink box, which is known to be a dynamic body, and that is because I created that tutorial sensor and the tutorial sensor object, this one that we created, has a reference to both these bodies. Um, so this is the regular body and then this is the trigger body. Uh, so now you'll see that like I can pass through this and nothing really happens. Um, and I haven't set any kind of filter state or anything. Uh, it, as you know, I removed that code. And you can kind of just push this body around, doesn't really matter. Um, I didn't really put a constraint or joint on it anywhere. Um, so, and then again, you'll see when I hit these bodies, uh, it says, the, the player says, I've been hit. Um, okay, so with that, we're up to speed with where we need to be. And now let's add some functionality into here. So I'm going to have this body uh, kind of interact in a strange way. Uh, I'm going to make it, uh, I could either make it spin or move, or I, I'll just, I'll do both. I'll kind of show off both. So first thing you need to do, we're adding a new kind of uh, contact response. So if, um, or actually we should probably write the method first, uh, private boolean is tutorial sensor contact. And you can name these whatever you want. Um, I would think that putting an is in front might be a good naming convention just so you can kind of understand the value it provides back. So fixture A, fixture B, uh, just like we had before, and then return. Oh, I'm sorry, this one's actually unique, um, like I showed off before, uh, where you have the nested if statement. So if a.get user data instance of tutorial box or b.get user data instance of tutorial box. And remember, we're doing this because uh, we have two different kind of objects now, or the user data could be either a tutorial box or a sensor, uh, or a tutorial sensor. So if a.get user data instance of tutorial sensor, or b.get user data instance of tutorial sensor, okay, and we can return true, otherwise return false. Um, so then we can come back up here and if is tutorial sensor contact FA, FB, pass it those fixtures and then uh, we're gonna have to do something a little different than we did up here. Because these objects were both known to be the same, we weren't really caring about which one was actually which. So um, I'm gonna have a tutorial sensor sensor and then a tutorial box player. And if F8, I get user data instance of um, tutorial sensor. Okay. Um, and then we need to explicitly cast that tutorial sensor. Good. And player equals tutorial box fb.getUserData. Okay, and you kind of have to do this. It's a little bit of the same code because at first you just check whether or not they're an instance of, and then you have to determine which is which if you have a particular case you want to handle that only is uh, working with one of them. Um, else, and, and you could clean this up by doing some sort of uh, generic check, but I'm not really going to get too involved here with that. Get user data, um, player equals tutorial box fa dot get user data, and you'll notice so fb and fa and fb and fa on the bottom here, so they're kind of swapped of each other depending on uh, what fa is. So once we've set these variables here, we can do sensor dot it. And uh, if you remember back in our sensor, we have 
our hit method. Um, and you know what? I'm actually going to call this, uh, you know what, hit, and then I'll also have another one, uh, public void trigger. So we'll system.out.println. We'll just put a little text in there that says triggered. And let's go back up here. So notice uh, still not much going on in the end contact, but we can mess around with that in just a bit. Um, but our begin contact, uh, we have, we're have we checking for a tutorial sensor contact. So whether a um, tutorial box has come in contact with a tutorial sensor object uh, by checking their user data. And then if they uh, are found, if that, if that case is found to be true, then our sensor is going to hit and trigger its action. So uh, let's see what kind of stuff we get here. Uh, we're most likely, I'm sure you can already tell, we're going to get uh, just some print statements for the moment. But there we go. So sensor has been hit and triggered was called. Perfect. So you can see that's any time I make a single contact with it. Um, it doesn't keep looping over and over. Uh, as it's only when the contact has began and when it has ended that it uh, gets called. So you might have to work in some different kind of code if you want constant uh, activation of uh, that switch. So let's go out of that real quick. Um, and let's start messing with that other uh, trigger body that we have in our sensor. Um, so I'm going to Let's see, trigger body dot apply angular impulse. And we're going to apply two newtons of angular impulse to the trigger body that is above it. And so now this is where you can kind of see you can start calling methods in here um, and start doing things with bodies that your object has references to or gets passed. And there's just a lot of possibilities, um, or a lot of things you could create by doing such. So now you notice when I hit the button, the box now spins on its own. And so I can kind of move this box out of the way. And because they have a reference to it, uh, anytime I come in contact with the sensor box, it'll just keep spinning. And uh, that's kind of what we're going for. So. Um, Next thing I want to do is, uh, like I said, I wanted to mess with the end contact now. Um, so again, I'm going to copy and paste this real quick um, because it's a lot of rewriting of uh, the same kind of code. Um, and really, you could have these methods down here uh, if you find is tutor like is tutorial sensor contact, then do all this stuff. Um, but definitely figure out a good workflow for here. Make it modular. Don't bloat these begin and end contacts with all the logic, um, such as just checking all the user data instance types. So again, um, so trigger, or how about rather untrigger, uh, such as like the player is stepping off the switch. And um, think of it like in Zelda, how when you step on a switch, that needs something heavy to stay on it. And when you step off, then it becomes untriggered. Um, that's what I'm kind of going for here. So you can kind of see how you can work that in there. Um, so we're going to do untrigger. And that's bad English. But um, I'm going to have the trigger body. So set linear velocity. Um, Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm going to apply a force to the center. That's going to be about 200 newtons, um, zero in the y direction, false. And uh, let's try that one more time and see what we get. So now uh, the way I have it set up is if I step on it, the box will spin. And anytime I step off, the box will shoot to the right. Um, 
by being given 200 newtons of force to the center of the box body. So let's step on it, it spins, and there it goes, just a little nudge. Uh, because the, uh, if you remember, I set the linear damping to 20, which is a pretty high value. Um, I'm actually, maybe I'll just set that a little lower just so we can keep messing around here. Um, I'll set it to 5. So get back on the sensor. It spins, pull off, nudges. So you can kind of see how that works. Uh, you can do a lot of things, influence all these other bodies in different ways, and um, set up some pretty interesting techniques such as turrets that maybe shoot a, uh, a bullet anytime you're on a sensor. Um, like they activate and will stay activated until you step off and whatnot. Um, but for the most part, that's just what I wanted to cover so you can kind of see um, how you can get that actual functionality out of your contact listener. So it's a little bit of the same stuff, but now you can kind of see that idea of uh, using multiple objects, and I, I wanted to kind of get that across. So hope you enjoyed this continuation video of uh, using your contact listener. Um, like, comment, subscribe as usual, follow my Twitter, check out the GitHub code if you'd like. Uh, should be posted in the description if I'm not too lazy to get that set up again. Um, but yeah, thank you for joining us.